Hey everyone, tonight I'm going to be making a baked pasta dish in the oven. I'm going to be making the sauce as well as sauteing some vegetables and then incorporating everything together and topping it with some cheese. So keep watching. So as part of the filling, I'm going to be using some diced onion, a diced zucchini. I diced two zucchini here, some green peas, uh, two slices of pancetta that I will be dicing as well, and a mixture of Parmigiano Reggiano as well as Fontina, and another cheese that I found called Provenello that I've shredded, and I'm also going to be using some fresh basil. And for the sauce, I'm going to be using some diced tomatoes that are canned, um, some leftover, just a plain tomato sauce. Um, gifted from my mother. Um, I will be using a pinch of red pepper flake as well as salt and pepper and some olive oil. So I have a hot pan here. I'm going to put my diced pancetta in and render it for a couple of minutes. And sorry, I just use my hands because it's easy. But that's going to go until the fat renders out. Um, if it's very lean, you can add a little bit of olive oil, which I will probably end up doing just to also cook the vegetables in it. If it's smoking, turn down the heat. If you don't have pancetta or you um, you know, you don't know where to look for it. You can use bacon, or you can leave it out if, if you don't, if it's not your preference. Okay, so after a couple of minutes or so, when the pancetta has rendered a bit, I'm going to add my onion and just stir it around so that the onion can get coated with the olive oil and also the fat rendered from the pancetta. Um, I'm not going to add any salt just yet. Uh, so, you know, just because the pancetta is already salty, but I'm going to let that um, kind of cook down a little bit until the onion gets a little bit softer, and then I'll be adding the zucchini. So after a couple of minutes have passed, the onion will become a little softer and it will change a little bit in color. It will become slightly clear. Um, it is going to continue to cook. So I'm going to be adding my chopped zucchini. And also just stir to coat and kind of combine everything. Um, now that I have the zucchini in here as well, and I'm going to grab a few pieces that I missed, I'm going to add a bit of kosher salt. So it'll help draw out the moisture from the zucchini. I don't want this to be very wet. So I'm going to cover this for about a minute or so, just so the the heat from the pan will steam up the vegetables a little bit. It will help in the cooking process. And when that is done, I will uncover it, uh, stir it around a little bit, check it for salt, and then set it aside. Okay, so it's been cooking for a few minutes, um, and I did taste it. It, um, it does need a touch more salt. Again, not a whole lot because I'm going to be adding salt throughout other areas in the recipe. But this looks pretty good, so I am going to set it aside in a pan and get started on the sauce. 
Okay, I'm going to be using the same pan. I'm not going to bother with a, a different one. This is the um, home canned or jarred tomato. And I've also got a can of diced tomato. I just let me get some water too and cover it, let it cook down um, probably for about 20 minutes or I'll start ch checking at about 20 minutes. And I'm also going to throw in some basil. Okay, so this is cooking down pretty well. Um, I did start my other pot of water for the pasta. I'm going to be boiling it about um, three quarters of the way through but I have not put it in yet. Um, I'm not quite done cooking down the tomato sauce, but what I am going to add right now is a little glass of white wine. Um, I know a lot of people use red wine in their sauces, but since I have basil in here and since I'm using zucchini, I do prefer how the white complements. Um, so I've added that and... It was chilled, um, which means it's going to take a little bit to to cook out and cook down, but it's fine. Um, I'm not really worried about that. Um, and I did add a touch more salt. Um, again, just a touch. It's Please err on the lesser side, um, since you can only add, not really take out. And as it reduces, it will concentrate the flavor a bit more. Okay, so my water is boiling for my pasta. My one pet peeve is when people do not salt the pasta water. So I'm it's gonna put some salt in, it will bubble up and then it will subside, but you do want a fairly good amount of salt. It's not going to be overly salty, so don't worry about that. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of stir that around so it helps dissolve and I will be I will be cooking two different types so first one is some leftover rigatoni I've got um, I'm gonna put that in first because it will take a bit longer and then the second one that I will be putting in but not just yet because it has a shorter cooking time I have some of this um, chickpea rotini by Barilla and it's just going to, um, you know, it's just going to be an extra pasta because I don't have enough of the rigatoni for the dish, but I will be putting that in a few minutes just so that the, the cooking time will end at about the same. I will check back with you in a bit. Actually, as the pasta is cooking, I'm going to finish up the sauce. I'm going to fish out the basil that was cooking with the tomato as well as the garlic um, that's one and this is the other part of it and what I will be adding are some frozen peas that I had again this was just the end of the package so I did rinse them off they are at room temperature and I'm also going to finish this off with, um, and don't mind my double espresso cup, but I'm going to put in a pat of butter to kind of round out the sauce since we did put in the white wine, as well as chopped fresh basil and a grind of black pepper. And I'll, I'm going to clean that cup in the sauce in a second. I'm going to stir this around. And then I'll just take it off the heat. If you feel that the sauce is a little too thick, once the pasta is uh, done cooking in the water, you can add a touch of the pasta water, and that will kind of help loosen up the sauce a bit, and it will also help the pasta cook in 
the sauce. Okay, some assembly time. Um, I went ahead and drained my pasta. There's a bit of sauce on the bottom of the dish. I'm going to add a, some sauce and stir it around so it doesn't stick. Um, probably some more. And I did add a little bit of pasta water to the sauce just to thin it out a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my zucchini mixture. And I will just mix it all up. Um, you're probably wondering why didn't I just put everything in the sauce, but I didn't want the sauce to be so watery. And I lost a rigatoni. Um, I will probably end up putting all this sauce in just because the tomatoes are chunky and that's kind of the point of having a bigger noodle so the tomato and the peas can actually go into the tube. Actually, I'm going to combine everything together and then I'll be back for the cheese. Okay, I combined everything. I stirred it up. Um, you can eat it like this with just a sprinkling of cheese, provided that the pasta is cooked through, and it's great. Um, however, this is going in the oven, so I'm going to put some cheese on it. So back here are the melty cheeses that I have, which is the Fontina and the Provenello. Um, the Italian deli that I go to has it. It's a bit of a sharper flavor. I didn't use too much, but it I like it, so I'm using it. And just go ahead and layer the cheese. Now, it's going to look like a lot, but it melts down, and you're not even going to see it. So since there's no cheese stirred into the dish, I'm just going to load it up. Um, and this dish, I'm going to say, would serve four people as a main course um, and if you wanted to do like a salad on the side or just some vegetables or maybe some fruit for dessert like tangerines that's great very European they love fruit for dessert um, and then I'm not using all of this cheese I just happened to grate the whole piece but I am going to um, sprinkle some of this too and this will add some saltiness and I've preheated my oven at 350 I'm gonna put it in and again I'm just gonna keep an eye on it it doesn't need it does not need a long time like an hour like for a lasagna um, it's a smaller dish so I'm gonna say again keep an eye on it check in about 20 minutes and it should start to bubble and get brown. I'm not going to cover it, but it's probably a good idea to put it on top of a sheet pan just in case there's some spillage, especially depending on the size of your dish or the height of the sides of your dish. Okay, I've just taken this out of the oven. I had it baking at 350 degrees for 20 minutes, and then I um, switched on the broiler and just broiled it until the top got bubbly, brown, um, the cheese has crisped up quite nicely. And so I'm going to treat this like I do any roasted meat. I'm gonna let it rest. Um, this way it'll be easier to handle, to cut up, to serve up. And um, but it looks really great. You can put a little bit more basil on top, but if not, you don't have to, or parsley is also good. Um, I'm just going to wait until this cools off a bit, and then I'll dish it up. Okay, so this has been resting, and I'm, I'm not ready for dinner yet, but I do want to taste it for quality control. So I just want to show you that um, there is still some sauce at the bottom. Not too bad though, I mean, it, it could always be scooped over the pasta. And let me just, <clears throat> I'm gonna 
Look at my dish a bit. It's super, super hot. But I just want to make it easier to scoop out. And I'm not going to take that much right now, but I just kind of want to taste it. I am gonna dig deep and just get a little sauce. So I would typically serve this in a bowl, um, but just for tasting purposes, it's in a small plate. And I do have some red wine that I will be drinking it with. And this one is from a place called Leoness Cellars. This is the bottle. Um, it is a winery that's down in the Temecula area that I went to yesterday, and it was quite nice. Um, if you're ever in the Temecula area, feel free to visit. Um, they do have wine tastings as well as a restaurant on site. They do tours as well. I can link the website below as well as um, the recipe that I made. Okay, and for quality control... Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's this thing that's called a nice pasta dish. A nice pasta dish is when that's all you need. <laughs> it's cooked well, it's cooked right, there's a nice balance of flavors, and along with a glass of wine, that's basically the perfect meal. 